Okay guys, so let's have a look at how we created our translation role. So let's get into it. So I have added this these sections here where, as you can see, I'm basically just duplicating the same section over and over, but when we're done with this, it will actually dynamically render all of the translations that we are inputting. Like we're basically going to click here, and we're going to be able to add a translation of some sort and so forth. But for now, we're just hard coding everything and getting everything in place so that we start off by having a template. And this is a good rule of thumb that before you actually start grabbing data, it, it is very useful to have a visual representation of what it is that you're going to do or what you're actually going to use, have to show to the user. Because when you have that, you can infer what type of models you're probably going to have to send to the client. Not necessarily the models that you will have in your database, but the view models that you're going to send over the network. So as we can see here, I've added these, I mean nothing really does anything at this point, it's just there to kind of be like in the interaction buttons and stuff of this nature are there. And here we can see that we're generating like a few random, like if I refresh this page, you'll see that the colors kind of change every time. It's not exactly the way that they do it in their application, but I didn't see a reason to like spend all that much energy on it. The colors are good enough, I think. And then we have this little icon here for the history, which we will, we will add at a later date. So this is pretty much the functionality as, as stands right now. Now let's have a look at our code. So we can see here that we have like a history icon and a trash icon, which is things that you saw earlier. And then we have this new component directory called translation list. And that's pretty much all the changes that we've made, as, as far as I remember. Yeah, that's about it. We added a few new global variables with a few new values because, hey, we needed to do that. And then, of course, our main CSS file has been updated with a CSS file that points to, well, basically this new translation list. And in our app, we've added a new section called translation list, which we're grabbing from this directory here. And now we can pretty much just have a look at it. So the, the this is the translation list, the, this component's fairly straightforward. It's just the unordered list with these rows. And when we are done here, we will basically put input <clears throat> this information here and dynamically render out all of these rows. And each row is simply a list item with two other sections called a translation me meta bar and a translation value list. And <clears throat> Basically, that's these two sections here. So this is the meta bar where we have some meta information about the actual translation. And this is the value section where we have another list of, well, the actual translation values. So if we have a look at the meta bar here, we can see that here we have quite a few things. So basically, yeah, you can probably see here we have the keys, key for translation, which is just this hard-coded value here. And then we have this little list here of the different tags that we're going to be able to apply to a to a translation. But we just start off by hard-coding that. And this is pretty much how we achieve the <clears throat> random bright color effect. So we're simply going to inline a style for the background where we use the HSL or hue, saturation, and light lightness uh, function in CSS and all we're going to do is that we are going to choose a random number between 0 and 360 roughly for getting the hue and then we look at the saturation of the lightness which is going to be the basically the way that we express okay we want a brighter or a darker color and by simply creating a, num a random number between 0 and 10 or I think yeah it's 0 and 10 and, a pin, and just adding on a, like a number that's going to represent the percentage, a fairly high percentage, like in this case it's going to be 65, we're always going to end up with a sort of random color, but it's still going to be in the bright range of things, which is good enough for us. Anywho, this is pretty much all the markup, and then we have our trash icon, things of this nature, nothing really fancy right now, because we're really only templating right. And... If we have a look at the value row, let's see the value row, yes exactly. This is the part which uh, this section here where we basically do a very similar, like it's just a list item 
and we have our little button here that is going to, you know, we pass in a value and either that value is going to be something or it's going to be empty. And yeah, that's that's really it. We've hard coded the like these languages and stuff like that for now, but in the future this this is of course going to be passed in dynamically. And this is pretty much all there is to to this story. So I am going to just call this. Well, we can just scroll through the CSS for for completeness completeness sake, but it's uh, it's a little bit well. I hope it's okay that I'm not walking you through every piece of CSS on the page because that's going to take like forever. Anywho, let's actually call this done now. We will say that this is now done and now we are going to add support for adding a row. So we actually can finally create, well, dynamically start to create some content. So let's have a look at that.